My name is Mohit Chain and I'm a board member for the Generation On National Youth Council. Generation On is a national organization, a division of the Points of Light Institute, that really works to facilitate volunteerism within communities all across the United States. Last March, Generation On selected 10 members all across the nation for its National Youth Advisory Council, and I was the member representative for the state of Nebraska. As a board member of Generation On, we basically run five different projects throughout the year for different days of service, such as the Day of Remembrance. Thank you for coming out for this Day of Remembrance. We want to make this both a sacred and a very special moment. Almighty Father, Creator God, we ask that you would be with us this day, that you would heal our hurting hearts, that you would sear the images in our minds to one of hope. My name is Jim Suttle and I am the uh 50th mayor of the city of Omaha. When this uh, happened tragically on 9-11 to our country, I saw uh, that, first of all, the innocence of America was uh, destroyed forever. And what we had seen in faraway places, be it Europe or Africa or Asia, was now coming to our shores. So that innocence was broken, but we also had an opportunity to come together as a people and begin to rally together to protect what has been given to us since the 1700s, and that's the freedom, freedom for people. My personal experiences were one, indeed, of shock, and I think I also lost my innocence that day when we were seeing and experiencing things. Fortunately, I had been on a business trip uh, that got uh, uh, ended early uh, in, in Dallas, Texas, and I was able to come home the, the day before on the, on the 10th as opposed to the 11th. But in those moments, uh, the concerns switched from uh, uh, my person and my own thoughts to the thoughts of our employees uh, at HDR because as an executive I had to uh, spend time and energies on those that we had in New York headed to the Trade Center for uh, a project meeting, those that were headed to the Pentagon for the same and uh, thank goodness fate was uh, on our side as uh, those individuals got stuck in traffic jams and could not get to their destinations. I think there's a message here. Today uh, what we are learning as on the 10th anniversary is that uh, we need to have a strong resolve and that we need to come back and be united. But the real question for me in a political sense is, are we going to remember this tomorrow on the 12th of September? Or are we going back to business as usual? As a, uh, someone who studies history and relies on history to help us do better for today and the future, uh, great nations were destroyed more often from internal strife than external. And although we have the issues and concerns of terrorism and we should continue uh, on our re resolve to protect our country, we have got to come together as a people and stop this squabbling between Republicans and Democrats in Washington uh, at the federal level, at the state level, and it's now it's even at our local level. The single message I would give to the people of Omaha is remember but have the resolve to come together and unify our purposes to solve our problems together and move to the future. As a nation, we need to be committed to freedom and peace for all. Without forgiveness, we run the risk of fighting evil with evil. However, don't mistake what I am saying because justice does not exclude forgiveness. Freedom does not exclude forgiveness. Peace for all does not exclude forgiveness. I was at Central Fire Station uh, 1516 Jackson here in Omaha, Nebraska. What we were doing as the, the Omaha Fire Department uh, and throughout the fire departments throughout the country on immediate actions were, was this based on a, an isolated incident um, in, in New York City? Was there, was there things going on around the country? Was there other attacks coming? Um, so again, the, the fire department is always prepared. Uh, but again, there's also heightened uh, awareness at times, and, and so there was there was actions being taken. But mostly, our concern was for those firefighters that we knew were uh, in those buildings, and the and the police officers and the citizens and their well-being. We wanted to try to do something like like all Americans did across the country, and and so we uh, we raised money through selling T-shirts, and 
But we ended up taking that uh, money to uh, the, the New York firefighters uh, for behalf of the, the firefighters and police officers' families. And, and being there at, at ground uh, zero on, on December 7th, um, going there to deliver the check uh, to the firefighters and police officers uh, unions, um, it, you know, of course it was, it was very emotional. Uh, talking to the firefighters and, and visiting with them in the stations that had lost uh, their brother firefighters and, and family members um, was ex extremely emotional that day for, for me uh, a month later. You talk about uh, how does this affect firefighters across the country of what happened on 9-11. It, it's the idea that they, they take an oath. You take an oath east, west, north, south in this country as a firefighter and it's to help people. It's as simple as that. You're there to help people and the firefighters care about people. And the firefighters want to do a great job, save people, and go home to their families. But if it comes down to it, firefighters will make the ultimate sacrifice for the people they're serving. I think the average American um, has learned a valuable lesson, like firefighters did and, and all citizens, that you know, freedom is not free. Uh, the idea that this country has is, is been uh, built on people making sacrifices, people working together, people doing uh, things for the, the good of all and not, not individuals. I think it made people think about what a great country we have and how much other strangers will sacrifice for each other. Firefighters, police officers, civilians were, you know, were there and been doing heroic things that day and trying just to help people. And I think that's what we all learned, that this, is, uh, this country, you have people out there uh, that what makes us great is that we'll sacrifice for a stranger and we'll lay down their life. On the 10th anniversary, of the World Trade Center attacks. We pay tribute to the over 3,000 people who lost their lives that day. We honor their families. We honor their friends. We honor their memories. While this loss is tragic, it brought to light the spirit of the people of this great nation. It allowed us to see firsthand what are the first responders, that the strength of this country is in its people and in its compassion. At 9-11 I was living in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. I was with the Salvation Army uh, in a core community center. Uh, one much like the Croc Center had a lot of uh, community programs, uh, congregational life, and uh, I remember sitting, personally sitting in my living room watching the events unfold on TV. Much like I think uh, the majority of people, at first the initial response was it was an accident and so you were kind of processing that in my mind of how could this, such an accident like that happen and immediately when you saw the second plane hit the tower then I knew uh, that it wasn't an accident and then uh, just disbelief. Uh, you just couldn't comprehend uh, what was taking place. What the event did was uh, really put in the public's eye um, not only the Salvation Army Red Cross, other nonprofit organizations that are uh, constantly helping in the community. Uh, that, of course, within our generation was the most high profile event that had taken place and uh, made it a little easier on the fundraising side only because the entire community uh, nation was understood what was taking place and what the needs were. Uh, I think in turn as uh, the Salvation Army uh, asks for funding for various events, whether it's Katrina, whether it's uh, Tornado in Joplin, uh, it always brings to mind uh, the opportunities that the Salvation Army does on a day-to-day -day basis. Just a couple blocks from the World Trade Center was, was still stands today our divisional headquarters for uh, the Greater New York Division. Those officers, Colonel Lamar and his staff immediately, uh, all being, uh, for the most part, native New Yorkers also ran to the site and began uh, serving. Uh, they literally stayed, slept in their office for three weeks before they actually took a break and went home. Um, and so the Salvation Army immediately was on site and then uh, through the organization of the Salvation Army we were able to call in volunteers from across the country. I think it's raised again, uh, raised the um, understanding of what non a number of nonprofits are doing, uh, the need for the public support community, uh, corporations to fund uh, the Salvation Army, other nonprofits for the ongoing uh, operations and needs that are in our country. I think we've all learned quite a bit from uh, that event. Uh, I don't think uh, 
you could have been prepared for such events. You know, we live uh, very comfortably in the United States and uh, never uh, dreamed that an attack like that was possible. Uh, so it's changed all of our understandings, raised it to another level, knowing that uh, on any given day, events like that, attacks can occur and it can occur uh, within our own community, so we need to be prepared. Well, I had an opportunity, I've known, uh, personally I've known about 10 individuals that actually served at 9-11, were able to go. Um, and I remember uh, their stories of coming home and uh, oftentimes not really knowing exactly what to say, uh, but they would share stories of uh, doing something as simple as they were providing for basic needs of the first responders and even to the point of giving the dogs socks because they had a number of uh, uh, dogs that were initially on site looking for survivors uh, but if you remember the heat was so intense that the dogs weren't able to walk on the rubble and so they were selfish army was actually handing out socks to put on the dogs so that they could uh, uh, continued uh, during their search. And I just remember talking to Colonel Lamar, being a native New Yorker, and this, how he took that so personal. Not only attack against the country, but this was his hometown. Uh, he loved the individuals of New Yorkers. And he said something unique happened. New Yorkers tend not to look at you in your eye, uh, tend to stay uh, kind of in their own space. He said at that point on 9-11 for a number of weeks, whether you're on the bus, on the subway, walking down the street, New Yorkers were looking at one another. And so that has made a great impact upon their lives. The Salvation Army is in the majority of communities, uh, again, throughout the world, uh, specifically here in the United States, uh, and able, ready to serve, whether it's a tornado, a hurricane, uh, flooding, such as we're experiencing now. But from that event, I think it uh, heightened everybody's awareness that the Salvation Army was immediately there. Um, just uh, doing what needed to be done, just helping people uh, get out of the building, get through the smoke, those types of things, and then made the commitment to remain on site for nine months, uh, continue to help. Uh, long after it wasn't front page news, the Salvation Army remained to uh, help those that were doing the work. Uh, serving and doing what needed to be done. They did not leave uh, that office site uh, for three weeks as they served uh, selflessly at Ground Zero. Salvation Army counselors provided emotional and spiritual support to rescue and recovery personnel working. The Salvation Army provided an American flag for each body removed from Ground Zero. The Salvation Army maintained a 24-hour presence at all three locations during the aftermath in New York City at Ground Zero, in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon, and in Western Pennsylvania. When we were given the grant from Generation On to implement a $500 service project in the Omaha community, I approached the Salvation Army because the Salvation Army really was one of the first organizations on field on 9-11. And well, it was a really phenomenal job that they were on site within 30 minutes. So I thought that they, this would be the perfect organization to really run the project through. As a member representative of Generation On, I'm planning a few service projects, uh, mainly the one being uh, launching a new website called omahacares.org, which will be a volunteer database system um, using uh, different databases and implementing like a volunteer recommendation system based on previous volunteer activities that recommends new opportunities for students to get involved in the Omaha community. Right now I'm working with uh, different representatives from both Generation On, Hasbro, and um, partnering pr with, in, with the United Way in the upcoming few months. While I'm currently developing Omaha Cares with um, different parts of my family, along with um, working with another council member who runs a similar website in St. Louis, my sisters Akancha and Imancha Jane are also helping me with the project.